And here's your next slice. My name is Chris Marquardt. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you're new to Tips from the Top Floor, uh, this is not the usual show. Normally I produce this in the studio. This one is um, recorded while I'm traveling in Siberia on Lake Baikal, on the big frozen... Uh, well, it's, it's pretty much one big ice cube. Uh, well, not quite an ice cube because Lake Baikal is fairly deep right in the middle. It's a, it's a mile deep, so course it's only the top layer that's frozen but it's thick enough to drive on it um it's over a meter thick um it's like three three to five feet thick and uh so that carries really well and uh we're we're uh, having a good time taking photos of ice which might sound boring but uh i'm i have pictures online now um at least this episode image is definitely from lake baikal and uh, i have as promised uh, uploaded a few pictures to flickr f-l-i-c-k-r dot com slash nubui is where you'll find those uh, f-l-i-c-k-r dot com slash n-u-b-u-i and uh yeah i've uh, i've been quite thorough with my workflow here um using lightroom uh, shooting with two cameras so i have the 5d mark IV with my trusty old 24 millimeter tilt shift lens on it and uh it's a workhorse it has just proven it's worth so many times and so i'm not ditching that anytime soon uh the other one is the 7d mark ii which is a crop sensor a APS-C sensor and that most of the time has the 70 to 300 on it um sometimes when, when we are out and about in the city i put the 24 millimeter stm on that which equates to about 40 millimeters of focal length and that's a that's good for street stuff and it's lightweight and small and a pancake and so th those are my two cameras that's what i have and then i brought my uh my um what is it a 13 inch macbook pro which is my yeah my editing computer i run lightroom on that and so every day so far, I have managed to finish my edits, to import the pictures. The routine, it's, it's, a da it's a really a daily routine here. Uh, come back to the hotel in the evening after being out for a day. Then uh, first thing is uh, open the camera back, take out the batteries um, and put them in the charger. I have two chargers here so I can charge them at the same time um take out the cards and import begin the import into lightroom and then go to the bathroom and do whatever i need to do uh because the import just runs um yeah all by itself and then um uh, i import the second one and then i do my one hour 1000 pics workflow which is a uh, first pass of just good doing the yes no decisions in the second path uh, second pass where i take the yes pictures and uh assign them uh one through three stars which uh yeah the three star pictures are the ones i want to continue on and then the third pass is working on those three star pictures and either promoting them to four stars if i like them and want to show them somewhere or even promoting them to five stars, which is like, this is an awesome photo and I want to use that as portfolio material. Or demote the picture if it turns out that it wasn't that good. Uh, that good. Um, anyway, so uh, you can read that uh, on on the little ebook that I've done years ago, but it's still valid. It still works. One hour, 1000 pics.com. I'm going to link that in the show notes. And uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing doing my workflow, doing uh, the photos. Um, I've managed to use some of the 3G that I have on this data package and uh, upload some of those to Flickr for you. So again, flickr.com slash nubui. And uh, yeah, those photos are there and that hopefully now <laughs> gives you some context to what, uh, what things look like here. And uh, as promised, here are a few of the voices of the group. <laughs> um, 
Who are you? Where are you from? Uh, my name is Anton Kuzmin, and uh, I do run like a travel agency in Irkutsk, Siberia, next to Lake Baikal. So um, Anton is the is the man who ha- who makes this all happen. We've been, uh, I've been with him three times. Tim has been with, been with him five times now, here uh, around and on Lake Baikal, and uh, we've just made a little stop at. Yeah, where are we exactly? So we're somewhere on the eastern coast of Lake Baikal at the Chivarkuski Gulf. Uh, there is a lonely rocky island named Naked Island, and we're exactly at the northern extremity of this island in a deep ice grotto. Yeah, this is, you can hear the light, slight echo here, oh, so... Oh. Woo, woo. So we're in, inside a, yeah, a grotto with icicles hanging down towards us. Um, it's, it's one of those surreal experiences that keeps me coming back because it is... Yeah, it's mind-blowing. Um, how long have you been doing this? Like, like making, making this available to other people? So I think over 20 years for now. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> organizing different <laughs> trips and travels and excursions. So, so you, you have several people working for you. You have an agency. And uh, as I heard, you, there's like several tours going on at the same time at this point. It's, it's high season right now for winter. Yeah, we have two peaks uh, of the year, uh, which are the high seasons for winter. Winter, it's all activities on the ice of the lake, which mainly happening in uh, after New Year time and second half of January, February, and maybe a little bit of March. How and long is the lake frozen? Uh, lake is discovering. It's actually get frozen after New Year time, usually in the first decade of January and stays frozen usually till the first decade of May. And, and temperature-wise, it's actually not too bad. I mean, the temperatures can go really low here. We're talking minus 40 and colder. Um, right now, we're daytime temperatures minus 10, maybe. So how, how thick is the ice on the lake? It really depends on the location. In the north, it can be up to one and a half and more meters, sometimes two meters. But last season, it's not going to happen. It's not happening because it's not that cold. Uh, in the south, it's roughly a meter or a bit less, like 70 centimeters, roughly. Uh-huh. How much do you need to carry a car? You know, ice of 20 centimeters can easily hold the car, but then so I think it's safe driving starts from like 45 to 50 centimeters. All right, but we are, we are beyond that. Um, so one last question, and you've, you've been living here, and you've grown up here, and you've been everywhere in and around the lake. So question to you is, what is your favorite spot around the lake? Ah, that's a very difficult question. I know lake is just quite huge. It's over nearly 70, 700 kilometers in length, and I, I do have a few few spots which are I there, really like. Are there spots where you go on your own and don't take any tourists? Like yeah, the I, do real, <laughs> I do really love the north of Hohon Island. It's really a nice kind of landscape type. You know, like stunning, high, vertical, gorgeous, rocky cliffs just facing high walls facing to the lake. But last, you know, years it gets really crowded. So I think I'm personally more now just prefer the more quiet places and the remote sites at the north of the lake all right just to still bring you the feeling of being in the in the wilderness with like absence of other tourists mm. so thank you so much and i'm pretty sure this is not the last time we're we're meeting here <laughs> yeah you're welcome just looking forward to all of all of you coming <laughs> to see you know winter beauties of lake Baikal. thank you so much so he, here's a very interesting thing that we're doing right now we are on the ice i sit i'm sitting in the car next to anton where it's it's interesting here where we're navigating the ice we're, we're negotiating the ice because the ice is like this living organism and it keeps changing and keeps moving cracks keep forming so if you want to drive on the ice it's, it's not this one big flat surface it is almost like an organism and it has its rules and uh, when cracks form you could you could end up breaking into the ice so um, I am um, yeah we, we just stopped for a second here because there were tire tracks in front of us and these tracks had split so they didn't continue in a continuous line which means a crack had formed in the meantime since that car passed and some of the ice had shifted so um, he went out and checked to see if it was safe to drive over 
and uh, when we cross the lake this is just a short trip but we will cross the lake and uh, then this is something that's a normal occurrence you end up stopping and then Anton goes out and pokes the ice with a stick and looks at the cracks and um, decides if it's safe to drive over so you can kind of hear this in the background that the ice is not just a surface it's a it has bumps it has it has cracks it has uh, yeah all sorts of phenomena so yeah that's just a short little thing from the car and uh, we'll <laughs> we'll we'll come out safe on the other side i guess Tell me who you are, where you're from. Uh, my name's Kim. I live in the Blue Mountains, west of Sydney, Australia. So that's uh, New South Wales. New that's, South Wales. Th that's where the big fires were. That's, that's where the big fires were. Is your the, house still okay? My house is okay. The uh, mega fire got to within two kilometers of my house. Oh, holy cow. <laughs> it was quite scary. Um, we had already sent all our artwork off for storage elsewhere. Oh, so and you saved the important stuff. <laughs> and we had boxes packed with the, all the important papers oh. and um, camera gear. So, uh, yeah. New, New, South, New South Wales, um, and what brings you to this cold place, to Siberia? <laughs> I like to experience unusual places around the world. I don't like to go to the the norm that Australians would do, like Bali or Thailand. I'm always looking for something that's just a little bit off the edge of normality. <laughs> Which this certainly is. <laughs> this is. And I'm just having the most incredible experience of my life and everyone should do it. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for helping me advertise this. What, what, what? Give, just tell me a couple of things that 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 uh, that you really like about this. We have we have fantastic guidance on this trip for Thank photography um, ideas. We have an amazing crew to keep us going on the road every day. And it's a it's a small group, which is ideal in my situation. I like being in a small group rather than a large group. And wouldn't be fun with 50 people. We wouldn't be fun with 50 <laughs> people, especially all females. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> this is, so, that. <laughs> so, so, so it's, it's out of the ordinary. Uh, how, how, how do you cope with the cold coming from Australia? Um, I'm doing okay, actually. It's, um, look. I have no gloves on. No gloves. Your, your, your hands have learned to turn on the heating system. Yeah, they have. Um, this, you know, I'm dressed appropriately. I've got layers on, thermals and smart wool. And so I'm coping with the cold quite well. Um, I feel warm because of the you know, appropriate clothing. I've got the appropriate boots. I prepared mm. myself for this trip. I just didn't turn up and with my thongs and go, oops. <laughs> this is not Bali. Um, how's the photography here? Oh, my goodness. The photography is spectacular. It's, it's, it's spectacular. What, what is spectacular about it? Well, for me, I've never seen anything like it. The beech trees are... Are they beech trees? They are. Birch, birch, birch trees birch are so pretty along the edge of the lake. The ice, with all its shapes, the beautiful light that comes through the <clears> ice. <throat> Walking on the ice out in the middle of the lake is something that I will never forget for my entire life. When I first started, I was like... Um, <laughs> I'm actually walking in the middle of a lake. That's a mile deep. <laughs> That's a mile deep. And I'm just going to tread very carefully here and stay near the car, which is what I did to start off with. But in the end, you can trust I me, even sure. went out in the middle of the night, about 250 metres away from the shore, and stood on the ice at night. And to do some night it, photography. To do some yeah. night photography and... I was just grinning from ear to ear. I don't think I've wiped a smile off my face since I got here. No, I've, I've seen you very happy since <laughs> you came here. So, is, 
Did you have any expectations before you came? I thought I was... I didn't really know. Yeah. Последний раз с кем ходили туда в Бугульдейку, с Голоустова, с Бодякой и с Шушонышем? Нет, Макса не было, у него гараж сгорел. Ну да, он гараж, где даже дом подгорел, говорит, вот на стенке. Не был. И получается еще Бодяки, на Женька, Жуков, вот мы в четвером были. А кого вы таскали прямо с такими? О, и один раз напоминаю, что я сейчас поставил много a lot of photos online on my Flickr account, flickr.com slash nubui, f-l-i-c-k-r.com slash n-u-b-u-i. Um, I saw the photos, you know, I was constantly showing people at home where I live, at work and family and friends, um, Google Lake Balkal winter. Yeah. And this is where I'm going. You're crazy. <laughs> but gee, it looks nice. <laughs> but you're crazy. It's going to be freezing. And I, and all I kept thinking is, but I'm going to see all this beautiful landscape. Landscape? That ice, ice scapes. Ice scapes. That doesn't make me crazy. No. That makes me adventurous. Which which you are, which you really are. You are the one who ventures off the group into like obscure places. <laughs> you throw yourself on the ground in front, on the ice in front of a big, huge ice blocks to take photos from below. Um, yeah, yeah, not bad for a sixty-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing really good. So no, it's one one thing that's uh, yeah. Thanks to the um, guidance of Chris, and we can find places that you wouldn't find if you were just wandering around but it's come hick him come hick him come here, quick look. get on your back and slide in under this cave oh wow and then you have then, a, a thousand icicles pointing then, down yeah. at you <laughs> and you have all these icicles pointing straight down at you but it is breathtaking Here's one thing about ice that uh, before I came here for the first time I didn't know. And uh, <laughs> I'm on ice right now and it's pretty grippy. I have uh, just my, my boots on and it's pretty grippy, um, more than I would have expected. But then I walk just like one, two meters to the side and it is super slippery. Ice changes all the time and then people slip. Uh, I think Kim just slipped. Are you okay? Good. Um, and and normally I would wear the like, cleats, like little, little spikes under my shoes. To it's like you you you, you get them for cheap online. And um, not doing that means that uh, you, well, first of all you got to be careful. But the, the conditions of the ice, the the slippiness conditions of the ice are. Are, are changing and the one of the reasons is that uh, there's there might be just some little ice particles snow particles on the ice and the moment there is a little bit of snow that makes it slippery that just changes the whole equation and you don't always see these little particles there might just be a thin layer of them that you don't really see because the wind blew them from a from a snowfield nearby so so you you really got to watch you watch your step because you yeah, again, it goes from grippy to slippy <laughs> within a couple of steps. And uh, the other thing that adds to this, which, again, I also wasn't aware of before I came here for the first time, is that the way this ice thaws, remelts, breaks up into pieces, and then those pieces get embedded in the ice means that this is not a slick, a slick even ice surface. This is a bumpy ice surface in places. In some places, it's really, really really straight but in some places it's bumpy so you end up with ice slopes here and there and then you and if that comes together with the uh, with, with the with the with the slippiness that you sometimes get 
then yeah you <laughs> you better have you better have something under your feet that prevents you from slipping but uh we all have those so uh nothing bad happened yet but yeah that's something that i learned about ice here here at lake baikal it is breathtaking just to look up at the ceiling of this ice cave and have all these beautiful icicles just pointing straight down at you and you take some lovely 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 photos get the spikes coming into the corner of your camera and uh. ah okay uh, so i think i'm in love with siberia and lake barkal well thank thanks for thanks for coming and i can't thank chris enough for putting this amazing trip on I'm mean, just having a ball. We'll do it again. <laughs> oh yes, okay. absolutely. Uh, we have to. We are shouting for us. We have to get back to the car. Um, they want to continue, and uh, then let's let's carry on and go and go to the cultural t- part of this uh, of this tour because we're now going to see some museums and stuff. Yeah. Well, the cultural side yesterday was was, was fantastic. We went out onto the the lake where there were these temporary fishing villages set up. Yep. And we got invited into one of into the yurts yeah. and got to see how these people live for the winter and they're drilling the hole into the ice and trying to catch some fish to survive. And that, that, was, um, that was a beautiful experience. Well, more of that in the next few days. I can't um, wait. I, me neither. So thank you, Kim. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Out here on the lake one last time. Time to say goodbye to Lake Baikal. And one thing's for sure, (laughs) I will come back. Because it's just, it's just so amazing. Just, just the, just the experience of standing out on, on the thick layer of ice, looking down into, into that blackness because it's so deep that no light comes back up and uh, the cracks in the ice that go on for miles sometimes and the the small cracks in the ice that give it all this structure and the three-dimensionality the bubbles in the ice we just stopped at a little lake beside lake baikal which is 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 more shallow and there's more vegetation in there and there's uh there's these methane gas bubbles that bubble up and that form these white discs under the ice, stacks of discs. So you have these chimneys of like 10 discs uh, repeating from the bottom up. And yeah, the photography is from a different planet. This is a different planet if you live in a, in a warmer climate. And uh, today's also a nice cozy day sunshine. We have beautiful sunshine. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm shedding a little tear because every time I have to leave here, it's like uh, I'm leaving something behind of myself. I just love this place so much. Anyway, that's it from Lake Baikal. That's it from Siberia. And uh, yeah, let me see where the next slice will bring us.